everyone, and good morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's such a great weather today. As today, we are on the Carnival Freedom Cruise Ship. In this video here, we're gonna show you everything there is to do on the ship, from the bars and the drinks, to the restaurants and the food, all the activities, all the amenities the ship has to offer. I'm starting out here on the Lido deck. I go by the legend, that is my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. Yes. We're hanging out here poolside, having a nice cocktail, and uh, pooled area, pretty nice. You got two big water slides. Yes. And you do have a kind of a splash zone for kids. Unfortunately, the tipping bucket has not been working all cruise long. No, that's sad. Yeah. You've got a couple of hot tubs right there. Great hot tubs position if you want to watch one of the films on the Funnel Vision. Or when we uh, were at the deck party. Yeah. We were dancing in the That was tub. pretty humorous. The pool area does have two pool bars, a rum bar and a tequila bar. A big centralized pool. And then they'll do music up here. Obviously, they'll do a deck party. Movies in the evening. And uh, a couple other things throughout the day. I think there's going to be ice carving today. All right, let's go check out the rest of the ship. On the back of the ship up here, on deck 10, you'll get the mini golf course. Uh -huh. A pretty good sized mini golf course. Lots of fun obstacles. I like the, the fake plastic palm trees. That's a nice touch. Yes. Also on this deck, you will have a jogging trail. So if you do want to run around outside, or if you want to use any of this really weird outdoor exercise equipment here in the Bahamas where it's about 3,000 degrees. On the top deck, there is a sports court area. Home to looks like volleyball, soccer, basketball hoop. And then you've got the very interesting funnel here on the Carnival Freedom. Unfortunately, about six months or so, the ship did catch on fire. So it's the only ship right now in the Carnival fleet that does not have the big classic whale tail. It looks odd. It does. Right now we're at the Red Frog Rum Bar, right by the pool. Uh, this is my preferred of the two pool bars. This one's definitely my favorite. Really nice selection of rum-based cocktails. We are currently both drinking a Red's Rum Treasure, which is a got some nice rums in it, nutmeg, guava, pineapple juice. Um, all the beverages do have about two shots in there, so they're, they're pretty hefty. And they've got a whole bunch of uh, different... Look at the rum list is pretty impressive for a pool bar. It is. Along with a lot of the different beers and especially all the, uh, the carnival specialty beers. And a uh, pretty nice beer selection. A lot of big beers, which is nice if you're hopping in the water. Located right next to the pool is the Blue Iguana Cantina, which is burritos and tacos, and in the morning, breakfast burritos. That's actually my favorite meal over here. My favorite place to get lunch on board the Carnival Freedom right here at Guy's Burgers. Look at those burgers. They put a whole bunch of different toppings on there. They have four or five different burgers. I normally like the donkey sauce, onion rings, and then go over here to the Fixin's Bar and get some potato sticks. On deck 12, over by the water slides, they do have a selection of outdoor games, foosball, ping pong, and billiards. It is nice because this area is undercover, mm -hmm. so you get a break from the sun, but also it's got a bad smell up here. I don't know what it is, but it is not, not, somewhere, nice. you wanna, it's not somewhere you want to spend time. On decks 12 and 14 in the front of the ship, you get the adults only serenity section. There is going to be a bar down there that serves up kind of a lighter, healthier cocktails. The lounges are really comfortable. Yeah, this is where you'll find your best lounges on the ship. Um, also, if you have a lot of kids on your ship, this is where you can go and escape the kids. And they've got really nice hot tubs right at the top in the very front of the ship. So just like look at the view you get from there. Mm -hmm. Right now in the back of the ship on deck nine, the Lido deck, and out in the back here, you do have a second pool. Now this pool, it's, um, well, first of all, very crowded today, but it's um, a little bit more relaxed pool. There'll be a lot of loud music sometimes on your main pool by the Lido deck. This one will be more relaxed. There are two hot tubs out here as well. But uh, yeah, well, I, I have not been in the pool yet. I kind of want to go in the pool because it's a nice hot day, but that is a lot of people for a pool. Now there is going to be a bar back here that runs pretty long hours and it'll run the standard carnival bar menu. And this also where you have your late night food option. If you don't want to spend any money, it'd be over there at the Pizza Pirate. So it'll run until I think like four in the morning or so. On deck three, towards the front of the ship, you'll get the grand atrium here on board, the Carnival Freedom. And the atrium is used a lot. During the day, it's going to be used for a lot of trivia and game shows. In the evening, there'll be music. Uh, recently, Carnival did bring back their music trivia parties, so a couple nights on your cruise, you will get that. There is some uh, some nuts and bolts kind of stuff down here. That's where the guest services desk is, as well as the Carnival Adventure Shore Excursion Desk. But my favorite part, well, it's the bar. They've got a nice bar. It runs the standard bar menu, like you've seen in a lot of places. And uh, I like 
blanket for the martinis. They have uh, three types of dessert martinis. Molly, you're drinking the Ultimate XO, which I believe is a kind of a Patron based one, isn't it? It is. And I've got a tiramisu, which tastes just like a tiramisu and has like five different types of liquor in there. Made by Larry. Larry Made by Larry. Larry, Larry the Gold Man. <laughs> <laughs> and they've also got the birthday beer on draft. So uh, we spent a lot of time here at the Atrium Bar. Right now we're in deck five, right off the atrium lobby at the Skybox Sports Bar. And I like this bar a lot. I'm a sports fan. Um, they've got, had my Yankees on two out of the four nights of the cruise, so that's good. Also, Football Sunday, they got a lot of games in here. Uh, some cruise lines do not get a lot of games. So that was very, very nice. One great thing is they had the, uh, which screen was on which game, yeah, like, so you could line yourself up. Yep. So like it was like Raven Saints, where it was all taped to the bottom of the screen. And they served the Skybox Martini, a really, really nice fruity martini. It, it's strong. Very strong, but it's it's absolutely delicious. That's my go-to drink in here. Located on decks three, four, and five in the front of the ship is the Victoriana Theater, which is the main show theater on board the cruise ship. And it's a big theater. Definitely a theater you're not gonna have a hard time finding a spot in as it is three levels. Now this is gonna be their main show lounge they use mostly in the evenings. We were on a four night cruise. On the first night there was a welcome aboard show with the cruise director. On the second night it was kind of like game show night where they do deal or no deal, which is a game where you have to buy a ticket and you might go on stage or you might play in the crowd. It's pretty fun, but it does cost money. Uh, it's also the night they did the Love and Marriage show. Then on nights three and four, we got our big production shows. And I really enjoyed both production shows here on the Carnival Freedom. The first one was 80s Pop to the Max, which is exactly what you think it's going to be. It's going to be singing and dancing to 80s song. But two cool things with this. They have a great giant LED screen that moves around. And then they use treadmills as stage props to sort of like run around and dance on. It was really, really neat. The last night of the cruise was a show called Getaway Island, which is kind of like a, kind of like a, it has a very Gilligan's Island kind of feel, but with the music of the Beach Boys and Jimmy Buffett. I uh, actually used 3D glasses, which was a little dated, but still neat. And uh, they also used a flair bartender in part of it, and that was really cool. Big thumbs up to both production shows on this ship. Molly, I think it's safe to say we're at our favorite location here aboard the Carnival Freedom, the Alchemy Bar. It's amazing. This is your martini bar, your craft cocktail bar. Get a really nice old fashioned here as well. Um, they have a really great drink menu. It lights up. Yeah, it's fancy. Molly, what are you drinking right now? I'm drinking the Cucumber Sunrise. Ah, the one over here. I like that one. I like the youthful and bold barrettini quite a bit. Um, where's my after dinner drink? That. Oh, up there. Closer. I like the French kiss. Yes, and it's also a martini bar that they have tons and tons of ingredients. So I'm drinking a raspberry martini off menu. We've had all sorts of martinis, all sorts of drinks. Uh, super friendly bartenders. Yes, very talented too. They make seven, ten drinks at a time. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, if you have that Cheers beverage program, this will be the best place to use it. Located on the promenade deck is uh, another spot I really, really enjoy on this ship, the Red Frog Pub. Mm -hmm. A big bar. Yes. Nice size bar. Uh, runs pretty long hours for an indoor bar on the ship. They've got a great selection of like tropical cocktails. Also a really good selection of rums. The uh, merchandise? Yeah, the merchandise. Uh, as a guy that loves, you know, beers and stuff like that, you do have a really nice selection of merchandise in here. And we have one. We do. Um, a couple things I really like about this, they'll do some sports trivia. I think they did sports trivia in this bar just about every single night of the cruise. We unfortunately did not win. I think we were one away on one night. Um, something I liked in this, I have not seen this on another cruise ship before. Every night of the cruise, they did a, uh, a cornhole tournament mm -hmm. in the pub. And that was really nice. On Sundays, there was some football games on in here. Not every game. But then what I love this back section of the pub. We can hang out and play free bar games like Foosball, shuffleboard, while drinking rums, and uh, I'm a rum guy, so like they have a, a bumbu rum from the Barbados. Absolutely love it. I just drink that straight on the rocks, and that's my go-to. We spend a lot of time here. A nice place. On deck five, in the middle of the ship, you'll find the Viennese Cafe, which is the main coffee area on board the ship. So if you want your Starbucks-style coffees, your frappuccinos, your cappuccinos, all that kind of thing, they also have um, some upcharge snacks. Mm -hmm. They all look fantastic, though. They do. Uh, my favorite part about this is, uh, well, I've been enjoying that beverage plan, and Gatorade definitely helps in the morning. And that's included when you're, uh, if you have that cheese program. Right by the casino and the coffee bar is the Carnival Adventure Shop. And this is kind of anything you might need on an excursion. So, you know, things to hold your, your ID, swim trunks, sunblock, water shoes, all that kind of stuff. 
on deck five, towards the back of the ship, you will find Scott's Piano Bar. A pretty good sized piano bar. Uh, very popular. Yes. Every evening this place has been very full. And uh, the piano player on our ship is a man named Stevie D. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, definitely more, like he'll sing the songs you know instead of like goofy comedy songs and not a lot of shtick. But uh, he sounds really, really good. I did like how everyone requested Elton John in piano bars. So he did one big giant Elton John melody. Yeah, um, he also so played things you wouldn't expect to hear in a piano bar, like Britney Spears and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have a specialty menu in here as well, some fun martinis and shots. Located all the way in the back of the ship on Promenade Deck 5 is the International Lounge. And this is, the main purpose of this, I think the only time this is really used is comedy. Yes. I think there might be a bingo in here later today. It's a massive, massive lounge compared to some comedy. However, it gets filled. Yeah, I mean, so it, get it, here it's early. very big, but like these seats don't fit more than, you know, six to eight people. Mm -hmm. um, there's two different comedians on the ship. Every night on the ship, there's been an 8.30 PG show and a 10.30 adult show. Mm -hmm. uh, Molly, I was more paying attention to the baseball game. What did, <laughs> what did you think of the one comedian we did see? I I actually liked him. He was he was good. We saw both uh, his uh, PG-13 show, or yeah, both, both the family show and the adult, adult show. show. Um, what was it? His name was Spike. Spike Davis. That was yes. his name. We also saw him in the elevator. Yes. And uh, there is a bar all the way at the back. Whatever you do when you come in here, don't order the blue drink of death. Unless you really want to feel it. On the Lido deck, towards the back of the ship, you will get the main buffet restaurant here on board the Carnival Freedom. And we haven't eaten here for dinner. We're going to show you what dinner looks like on the last day of our cruise right now. But for lunch, they'll run different buffets on different areas. So good. So this area closer to the pool will have a different food than the one in the back. Now, it's not going to be the same for breakfast and other meals, but definitely for lunch, make sure you explore the entire buffet. Uh, there are also complimentary beverages over here that are included with your cruise. So you'll get iced tea, water, lemonade, as well as some uh, coffees. The dinner buffet does begin with a pretty good size salad bar. So many toppings. Lots of vegetables. Yes. Up next, you do have a selection of cold salads. Like roasted butternut squash in winter. Oh, Molly, cheese. I like cheese. And we have made it to the main event of the buffet. Now, a lot of the times on Carnival, your, uh, what you'll have in the dining room will also be on the buffet. Starting off with fried shrimp, then penne moriscos. Then you do have a blackened mahi mahi. I like this, the chicken milanese. That looks really good. Really, really good. The jerk pork loin, which I had for one of my one of my dinner options. That was very tasty. Ooh, the enchiladas look good. Look at the cheesiness on those. They look really cheesy. Yeah. We're gonna finish it up with some some steamed rice, a baked potato, and there's always a carving station, which today is a turkey. Now for dessert at dinner time, it does not have the best stuff. You got some chocolate chip cookies, some fruits, an apple cream cake, and a carrot cake. Now, um, if you come during lunch, they have a station open over here where they will carve up like probably a selection of six or seven cakes. And uh, it's really, really good for lunch. Here is a salad topping bar. So the dinner buffet did receive itself a little bit with the desserts. On the other side, there was a marble cheesecake. In the buffet area, you will find the Carnival Deli, which runs around, around 11 to 11 every day. A uh, good selection of hot and cold sandwiches. Uh, some new stuff too. I haven't seen a stick and cheese before and I'm really tempted for that. But I, I love the buffalo chicken as well. At the deli, I went with a chili dog. And at the deli, Molly went with the ham and cheese. So it's a nice toasted on there. In the buffet area at lunchtime, they have Mongolian wok. So you grab a bowl, you fill it up with all sorts of stuff, whatever you want in there. And then there's chicken, shrimp, and beef down at the end, where they'll have black fried up for you. And here's what our Mongolian wok looks like. We went with noodles, a little bit of onions, beef, chicken, 
and then the least spicy of the sauce is the black bean sauce. When you get towards the back of the buffet area, there is a second level up here on deck 10. And this is where every day for lunch they have old fashioned barbecue. So it'll be brisket and chicken and pork butt. Pork butt definitely being my favorite. In the very back of the buffet area, you'll also find a coffee bar. So if you want to get your kind of like your Starbucks style coffee or espresso or cappuccino, that kind of thing, it'd be an extra charge in the back. The buffet area is home to a upcharge sushi restaurant. I am not a sushi guy, but this does cost extra. Not too much. I mean, it's like $2 a piece, which actually seems pretty good. Right by the main pool in the entrance of the buffet area, you do get swirls, which I, I love when they do this. So there's a frozen yogurt that's got chocolate and strawberry, and then a soft serve ice cream with vanilla and chocolate. Like how it's different flavors. In the buffet area, there's also a couple of these pour your own beer station machines. So if you're not on the Cheers Beverage program, it's probably the cheapest place to get a beer on the entire ship. On deck four in the back of the ship, you'll find the Habana bar. And this is um, kind of a, on its own. It's near yes. one of the dining rooms. Actually, it's in between the two different dining rooms. It's not used much. But it's, it's karaoke every night of the ship. Yes. So uh, I think it's been like seven to 11 every day there's been karaoke in here. The chairs though. Yeah, the, uh, the Carnival the Freedom chairs. does not have a, like the best chairs in the world, but these guys, these are some comfy chairs. Um, I do like some of the decor in the bar as well with uh, the Cuban cigar theme. As you see, the tables are all themed like little cigars. Mm -hmm. um, karaoke was very popular. Yes. But there's also a lot of seats in here. So it's the kind of thing like if you wanted to sing, you're probably waiting a while. If you want to come in here, enjoy some of these fine, fine chairs, They're get yourself really a beverage, it's pretty good. Located inside the Habana Bar is also the Dream Studio, which is if you want to get fancy pictures taken, and like the fanciest of fancy pictures, like just you and your party and they take a whole bunch, you would do it in here. I think you, you make reservations or something like that. Yes. Located on the Promenade Deck, Deck 5, is the 70s Nightclub. Now, despite its name being the 70s nightclub, they play modern music. So if that's a concern for you, don't worry. Uh, I think my favorite part about it is they have these revolving disco balls. That's pretty neat. I also really like the lights over the bar. We made it to the nightclub one night on our cruise and it was a, uh, it was popping in here. It was very, very popular. One thing to remember about Carnival Cruise Line nightclubs, you cannot take your drink onto the dance floor. They are very, very strict about that. On deck five in the middle of the ship is where you'll find the casino on board. A uh, pretty good sized casino. It is. Of course, the giant casino bar as well. Massive. And uh, I'm not the biggest gambler, so I actually have not spent any time in the casino at all. I do like that they have more like the uh, kind of goofy arcade games, like the crash crane, cash crane over here, or this one. Yeah, this one I've never seen before. No, where you could uh, try and cut the rope and win a thousand dollars. I will definitely recommend playing casino games on the cruise ship as if you do uh, if you you do play enough you can get some really good offers to come back on cruises for relatively inexpensive the few times i've walked through this casino though it has been a little bit smoky yeah but a uh, pretty pretty good sized casino lots lots of table games lots of slot machines mm -hmm. On deck 12 in the front of the ship, you'll find Camp Ocean, which is the three different kids clubs for three different ages. Also in this area is going to be the Dr. Seuss Bookville. It's mm -hmm. a room that's kind of open. I love it because it could be families that can come here and read or kind of have fun and play. Yes, and they do have like all the Dr. Seuss books to come in here and read, which I, I really like this idea for, you know, the families with young ones. Mm -hmm. And they do have a, a box of toys as well. Lots of big comfy chairs. Very colorful. Obviously Molly and I are not kids, so we are definitely not going into Camp Ocean, but this is right next to it. And yeah, it's really, really nice. And the Camp Ocean will be over there. Also in the outdoor area by Camp Ocean, they do have a Camp Ocean playground, which is a good place if you have little ones they can come and burn off some steam. Located on decks three and four, right off the main atrium lobby, is the Chic Restaurant. This is also going to be where you would find their art gallery. The art gallery is a little bit hidden. Um, if you have the My Time Dining, you check in via the Carnival Hub app. And uh, sometimes we've had like a 10 minute wait. Sometimes we had more of a half an hour wait. But uh, the dining room is very nice. I've actually enjoyed. We've uh, This will be our third meal in the dining room. I uh, really like night one. My other night was just okay, but I was also super full from all the drinks. Let's see what night four looks like. We have sat down at our table. 
Uh, the dining room menu is on a QR code. You can ask for a real menu and they will bring one up. Dinner course begins with a selection of breads and butters. You get two different types of bread and a really, really nice soft butter. The appetizer course has arrived. Molly got steak, ale, and cheddar soup. Me personally, I, I just didn't care much for the appetizers on the menu today. So I got two entrees, starting with the jerk pork loin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The main course has arrived. Molly got the southern fried chicken, and that's a, a very healthy portion. Looks like a full half chicken. And I got the short ribs. All right, dessert has arrived. Molly, that is a, a honking piece of baked Alaska they gave you. Yes. And I went for the traditional Carl's Warm Chocolate Melting Cake. On deck 11 in the front of the ship is where you'll find Spa Carnival. Now the spa on the Carnival Freedom, it is not a very large spa. Actually one of the smaller ones I've seen on any cruise ship. They do have a large salon area where if you want to go and get your, your hair done for formal night or a couple other treatments, there's also going to be a manicure pedicure kind of thing where you could get that done overlooking the ocean. I thought that was really cool. Now the massage rooms are actually pretty neat because they, again, like the Manny Petty room, they overlook the ocean as well, so you could book a massage and get a cool view. In each of the men's and women's locker rooms, you'll find saunas and steam rooms. And then this is also where you'll find the gym on board, so if you want to work off some of those calories before getting your seventh cheeseburger of the cruise, well, you can do so here. Weight machines, ellipticals, cardio stuff. There's also a dedicated room for exercise class. So if you want to sign up for a spin class, you could do that in here. And uh, I believe there are an extra charge for those. If you need some fresh air, just want to catch some scenic views, if you go to deck three, all the way to the outside, get this wonderful viewing deck where you can come and look at the ocean, great place to watch sunset at sea. Or, you know, maybe that beverage plant is hitting you, or the seasickness is hitting you. You just want to catch some fresh air. It's always been very quiet out here as well. One thing I do like about the Carnival Freedom is the artwork. If you take the main stairs, which is gonna be the ones over by the atrium, they've got these wonderful giant paintings of all sorts of different animals. And each level has a different painting. Located on decks three and four in the back of the ship, you'll find the Posh Restaurant. Now on our cruise, this is used if you have that set time dining. So if you have early or late dining, this is your dining room. But today is Sea Day Brunch, and this is where Sea Day Brunch is. The food has arrived at Sea Day Brunch, and well, it took a while for our reservation. We got our food within like 10 minutes of ordering, so that was remarkably fast. Yes. We waited got... about 45 minutes for the table, 10 minutes for food. But your uh, your Eggs Benedict looks fantastic. It does. Got some side orders. Uh, mozzarella sticks is on the kids' menu, but mozzarella sticks are great. Mm -hmm. Some bacon, and then I got huevos rancheros. And for my brunch dessert, I ordered a banana cream pie, which is absolutely my favorite thing they serve at Sea Day Brunch. On Dick 5 in the promenade area, there is the Warehouse Arcade, a pretty good sized arcade. You have a ticket eating machine over here. And uh, the first thing you see is a lot of cranes, some very, very high value cranes. You can win all sorts of stuff, like multiple iPads or PlayStation 5. And then uh, you're not as high value stuff, like you can win Baby Yoda. The Baby Yoda. Versus the iPhone, yeah. We, we, I mean, we could use two iPads, Molly. The more fun stuff over here, GoPros, Beats headphones. Um, now, when you cash in the tickets for prizes, you do use this machine over here. Let's see, we got more games. A crank game. One where you can try and win 500 tickets. Pop the lock. Disney Crossy Road, which is some. Um, you haven't played that before, very similar to Frogger. These games are pretty fun. I will say the games are kind of a really expensive side, like if you want to play Disney Crossy Road. It is $1.50. That is expensive. So it's the kind of thing these do add up pretty quick. More high value prize stuff. Keymaster. I like this, the crane game where you can win tickets. Uh, these, the uh, Pearl Fishery is a pretty fun game. Uh, yeah. I do like the uh, the Raving Rabbits virtual reality. Not really a, a game, it's more of a ride. Yeah. Oh, looks like somebody has one barber cut on the sheet. And somebody's also one superstar, that's good. One I have not seen a lot, Mission Impossible Arcade. Oh man, look how cool the basketball game looks. I love games like this too, Goldfishing, Down the 
Clown, Milk Chug Toss, and then Let's Bounce. These are all like, this is probably my section of the arcade over yeah, here. Yeah, that's... The ones I would definitely want to play. You do have Pac-Man Smash, the big air hockey game. A boxing game where you can punch the bag as hard as you can. But if you hit it on a certain number, you can also win a high value prize. That's cool. Yeah. Piano Keys, Typhoon from our buddies over at Triotech. Some big arcade games like Jurassic Park and Halo Fire Team Raven. And then more ticket games. Pretty solid arcade. Something I love whenever cruise ships have it, and the Cardinal Freedom does indeed, uh, big glass elevators. So if you take the elevators towards the front of the ship, you could get a really cool view of the atrium and anything that might happen to be going on. It's a big 50th birthday banner we slide right on past. Make our way down to deck two. Of course, being on deck one, I have to take the stairs. Located on deck 10 in the middle of the ship, you'll find the Sun King Steakhouse, which is the main upcharge restaurant here on board the Carnival Freedom. And uh, normally I don't do a lot of upcharge restaurants on ships. Molly and I, we got extremely lucky. We actually won a free dinner by going to the Fun Aboard, Fun Ashore show on day one. So we're going to dine at the steakhouse this evening and walk you through our entire experience. Making our way towards our seats now. And a uh, very pretty dining room. You can see they have an open kitchen so you can watch the chefs do their thing. And man, the big skylight. And wow, look at that chandelier. And we have made it to our table. Upon sitting down, you are greeted with a, uh, a bread and butter course. A uh, regular butter, and then I think it's a pesto. Mm -hmm. And then uh, three different types of breads. Unfortunately, just like the main restaurants, the steakhouse does have uh, QR code menus. So you have to make sure you bring your phone, have your phone charged, and that kind of thing. For the mousse bouche, it's uh, very interesting. It's a mushroom cappuccino. That is something I have not seen anywhere else. Uh, really cool, they offer you a, a, a variation of salt to cook your uh, steaks and meats on. Our appetizer course have been served. Molly, uh, this sounds fantastic. It is a mushroom and crab risotto. Yes. I went with something I really enjoy, and that is a Berkshire pork belly. The main course has arrived. Molly ordered the rack of lamb. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your favorite dishes. It is. And then you get two sides. Mac and cheese she ordered. I love how they did the baked potato. Yes. I went with the nine ounce filet mignon, medium rare, which looks beautiful. And more simple side dishes. So I got a french fries and some onion rings. Some quick thoughts on the main course. Uh, Molly's lamb, very, very good. It is. But my filet, Yours is a, oh the my winner. goodness. Yours is um, really, really good. Hopefully medium rare, and uh, one of the best steaks I've had in my entire life. Absolutely fantastic. So Molly gets the cheesecake for dessert, and I want the chocolate sphere. Here we go. Also, do want to mention there is a bar at the steakhouse. So, if you, you're kind of dressed fancy and you don't want to go eat, you could come over here and have some of the like the best wine list and the best whiskey list on the ship. And there we go. That'll do it for the Sun King Steakhouse. Um, one of my favorite specialty dining restaurants I've done on any ship. Mm -hmm. The food was so good. It was. Sure. In the atrium area on deck five, it's where you want to spend most of your time if you're a big shopper. This is going to be a big shop. I think this is the biggest shop on board. And that's going to be more like jewelry and perfumes. Uh, stuff that's, you know, I'm not going to buy on a ship. Over there, that's going to be your more uh, lower spending shop, I would say. That's going to be all your souvenirs, as well as duty-free liquor. 
And then right behind me is the oh so adorable candy store cherry on top. You can buy all sorts of Dr. Seuss guys, as well as lots and lots and lots of candy. Let's take a look around the main gift shop here, see what kind of fun stuff we could find. That's actually a really good price. You can get one of these wine tumblers for $6.99. It's a line of Carnival Freedom coffee mugs. And then water bottles. Those are nice. Yeah. You do a lot of merchandise, but they're still celebrating the 50th anniversary, so you get one of those weird hats. A uh, 3D glass ship model. Some t-shirts and towels and polos. And a whole bunch more of the 50th anniversary stuff. I love the swizzle sticks, there's shot glasses. Really cool merchandise. One thing this gift shop does not have is a cruise ship ornament. Normally that's something Molly and I try and collect on every single cruise, and they don't have one on this one. Now, we have been on the Freedom a number of years ago, so we did buy it then, but it's something we always look for. Yes. Oh, look at the toys. Those are cool. In the atrium area on deck four is where you buy any of those photos you might have taken along board the ship. It's also going to be home to the Monticello Library, which actually has been a kind of popular all cruise long. Very American themed library with the Declaration of Independence. And they do have uh, board games in here as well. A lot of board games, like some of the most board games I've seen on any one of these ships. Yes, and this uh, library has been very crowded. Yeah, but it uh, took me a lot of times to film this bit where we are. They don't, they don't have too many books in here. But do you know which one they don't have? Experience the Point, the unofficial guidebook to Cedar Point, third edition from our own Andrew Hyde. So we're going to take this, this book autographed by the man himself, and leave it here in the library of the Carnival Freedom. So you can come on, find Hyde's book, take a picture with it, send it over to us on social media. But don't steal Hyde's book. That would be mean. We were wrapping it up with our stateroom cabin. We were in 1230, which was an interior cabin, but I thought it was perfectly fine. A uh, couple things, I like the artwork on the walls. Yeah, nice touch. Yeah, good color. Um, the room got very cold, which is nice. Sometimes that's not always the case on cruise ships. Mm -hmm. TV was it was not the best. You did have a couple of movie channels, a couple of like uh, Nickelodeon on board and things like that, Cartoon mm -hmm. Network. Uh, no 24 hour news channel, which was a, a little troubling because we uh, got back to Florida and Apparently there's a hurricane on the way, so that's not ideal. Well, knew that we knew there was a hurricane. <laughs> and then there's a, a little fridge down there. Uh, lots of closet space. Uh, right now this ship is doing a four and five night cruises, so uh, plenty of space there. And then the bathroom. Got the shower curtain, which is not the best. Lots of space for all of your bathroom stuff. And you've got the terrifying cruise ship toilet noise. <laughs> And that'll do it for our time on board the Carnival Freedom. And I, it's, I had a really good time. There's mm -hmm. some good parts, some not as good parts. Let's start off with the positive. Yes. And uh, Molly, what were some of your favorite parts on this cruise ship? Oh, I love the alchemy bar, of course. Yeah. The they, bartenders were amazing. Uh, Karen and Zora. Yeah, they were the alchemists they were and they were so friendly. Yes, and, and but it's always so tasty drinks and... A variety of stuff on uh -huh. menu, off menu. Uh, for me, the highlight was that steakhouse meal. It's been a while since you and I have ate at a Carnival Steakhouse. But that was one of the best specialty meals I've had on any cruise ship ever. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, my, my, my steak was so good. My filet, your, uh, your risotto that you had. Oh, it was really good. Pork belly. Yeah. Oh, that was I good. enjoyed how, how much entertainment with music there was. There were so many different bands. Uh, you had a ukulele player that you don't see. No, an acoustic duo, uh -huh. a steel drums guy, a big rock band, yeah, uh, a, a lot duet. of music. Yeah, a yeah. lot of music. Violinist. A lot of music all around the ship. I liked uh, some of the other stuff, like they did a beanbag tournament almost every day in the pub. Mm -hmm. And uh, we Sports played one round, trivia. we lost in the first round, but... Uh, we did, uh, well, I did okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, speaking of the, the sports bar, gets all mm -hmm. the NFL games, which is uh, a lot of cruise lines, they don't get that. Yes, it is uh, small, though. And hot. And that's a, that's a negative. Yep. Um, the, I was very shocked of the food on the buffet. The f food on the buffet, especially for lunch, Yes, and one other thing I really liked is um, uh, the main entertainment, too. Like, the two production shows, the 80s show and Getaway Island, both very strong Carnival cruise ship shows. Yes, and the Getaway Island's not on that many uh, cruise ships, I think. It's not on as many as Epic Rocks and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, I really like that the music trivia parties are back in the atrium. I think that having that kind of event in the atrium in between the two shows really helps fill out that entertainment lineup. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's some of the stuff we really enjoyed. But unfortunately, you know, we're honest here, so there's some stuff we didn't enjoy so much. Uh, like Sea Day, it was hot. It was hot in the ship, on the deck, everywhere. 
and the pools were slammed. Both small little pools, both. Very, very full. Yes. Uh, my biggest one was the air conditioning. There was parts on the uh, ship that was so hot, like the sports bar, incredibly hot. Um, some of the chairs in the alchemy bar was even hot. Yeah, if you got by a window. Yeah. Any, uh, however, the Red Frog Pub, really good air conditioning if you were under a vent. Yep. Uh, speaking of that, the small venue kind of thing, small piano bar, small sports bar. And, uh, you know, those would fill up, especially during NFL football or uh, during when the piano guy was playing. Mm hmm uh, there's something I see a lot with Carnival Cruise Line is they don't use their TV too much. Their big giant funnel vision thing, like, like they just show like a screensaver mode of mm -hmm. like advertisements for stuff you could do on the ship. Like at, at Sunday, if it's Sea Day at one o'clock at four o'clock, you don't you don't have to play the sound, but there should be an NFL game on there. Yes. Uh, speaking of TV, as we were on the cruise while there was a hurricane forming, there was no 24-hour news channel. Uh, it was not your CNN, you know, Fox News, Fox any, news of those. any of It was just, there was no, nothing. We had no idea what was going on with that hurricane. No, no, it, 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 it didn't even show up. Um, also, there's too much heart, Henry Danger. There's like a Nickelodeon <laughs> channel, and it, like all they play for 12 hours a day is Henry it's Danger. Like in the afternoon, in the, mm -hmm. in the morning was a good mix of TV. <laughs> uh, a very small, a very small nitpick here. There's lots of bad chairs on this cruise ship, whether it's bad bar stools, or not the most comfortable chairs. It's not like you sit down in a lounge and you're like, ah. Havana uh, lounge though. Yeah, that, that was the only one. <laughs> All right, and the, oh, I think we have one final thing here. Uh, the dining room was you noticeably short staffed. Yes, and that is no fault. The servers were amazing. Yeah. But the wait times were, you would check in for your dinner and you would be waiting 20, 40, an hour just to get a table. Um, also with the short staff, since they weren't doing the show times, normally the, the uh, waiters will, you know, dance and put on a show when mm -hmm. they're short staffed like this. Obviously, probably the right call not mm -hmm. to do that and just keep the focus on food service. But overall, had a really great time. Yeah, I definitely loved it. If you have any questions about the Carnival Freedom, please let us know in the comment section below. And here at the end of the video, I did screenshot the uh, all the main dining room menus and the times guides of all the activities on the ship. So uh, check that out now. And thank you very much for watching.